Hey guys, Dark with Cyclone FPV, and this is actually going to be, I think it's a pretty cool video that we're going to be doing. Um, and it all comes at the, uh, uh, because I got a uh, an RMA sent back to me for an HGLRC uh, quad. And um, the, the concern was that uh, the person bought it uh, with the uh, Flysky uh, IA8, IA8S, or the A8S receiver, right? Version 2, uh, which is like one of these right here, okay? And... <clears throat> Beta flight was reporting that hey, it's uh, dropping RSSI signal too low and it's getting an RX loss and then dropping out of the sky, right? And so they thought, well, the receiver might be bad or what have you. So I decided to look into this. Now, there's a couple other issues going on with this quad and some firmware updates and things, but it got me thinking about um, some of the software and some of the um, features like the RSSI features and things like that that may not be on this yet or may not even come with the, uh, the i6 uh, transmitter, right? Um, so I started researching about it and I found some awesome guys, I mean these guys are brilliant, who made software patches and hacks and mods or what have you uh, to update the transmitter and also the receiver. Uh, the problem was, or at least I found it, is that it was kind of pieced together. Uh, everybody had a piece of it and so I was like, you know what, we're going to sit, we're going to do it and I'm going to fix this guy's quad and then I'm going to put it together in one location and I'm going to give credit to everyone who developed it. I'm just making it, I'm trying to make it a little bit easier so that it doesn't take you the amount of time it took me, right? If, if Assuming you have one of these, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a split screen here or a, a picture in picture. So give me one second. Oops, that's not it. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so this was the quad in question right here. And uh, it comes with, uh, as you can see right here, comes with an A8S uh, receiver, okay? And um, again, the problem was that this receiver was getting RX loss through flight and then the quad would crash. Uh, okay, so one of the things that we need to do, and we're gonna do this in stages, but I do wanna show you something else. I'm gonna switch over to our website real quick because this is an actual tutorial that I'm putting online too, um, and it's gonna be updated. So I'm doing this as we're doing the video. Uh, so when, this, when I'm done with this video and I, and I compile it together with all the links, uh, then it'll make it a little bit easier. We're gonna go to tutorials here. And the title will be how to set up the RSSI on the Flysky FSI-6 uh, and then also in beta flight and so forth. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a, a, a quite a few steps here. But, uh, and I'm trying to give you links to the software that you need uh, and things like that. So we're going to go ahead and just click on this. And there's going to be stuff that I'm going to tell you in this video that's not on here yet because I'm still updating the site, okay? But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the transmitter itself, right? So we're going to go through how to update the transmitter. And to do that, you're going to need a cable and there's links here. You can get this from our site. I'll just open a new tab so you can see right here that we sell the cable here. Um, and then this is the firmware, the mod hack for the um, uh, transmitter that I got. I'm trying to give right here the gentleman, uh, actually it's a group of guys. I mean, uh, one guy made the software, one guy made the compiler, what have you. Uh, so I gave you a link to look at all that because I definitely want to make sure it's clear that I'm just trying to provide their stuff a little bit easier in one location, but you can easily click on these links and find out who it was. And I'm trying to give the credit where need be. And then here's the link to the uh, Flysky firmware uh, because they also have an update to their firmware, but unfortunately it does not do what we need. But if you ever want to revert back to Flysky and get off of the uh, mod firmware, uh, then you can by clicking this link. So we're gonna get started with this first, right? And, and one of the things that we need to do is let's go ahead and just get the transmitter. So here's the transmitter I'm working with right now, and we're going to get the data cable. And so here's the data cable. And like I said, you'll find a link on the website to that. So here's the data cable, which is going to plug in to the back of the, um, of the uh, receiver, right? So let me go ahead and do it like this. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's better to do one, two, three. Let's try like that, okay? See how this works. All right. So what we want to do first is we've got to update our transmitter, okay? And so we're going to put in this cable, and you can see right here there's a little pin in the top. And that's going to go on the top here, all right? So that's going to pop right in. And then this is going to plug into the computer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the control panel so you can see what this looks like when it happens, okay? So let's go to Device Manager. And I want you to watch the COM port section. Clearly, I don't believe it's here right now, but as soon as I plug this in, it will be. I'm going to use a USB extension cable for the time being, so I don't have to keep reaching over. So let me just extend this cable here, and here's what's going to happen. So watch the computer. You'll see this light up, so there's a light here. And now you're gonna see there's a COM port created. Okay, and that's gonna be, I think, COM5. Yeah, it is, it's COM5. Okay, so this is running the Silicon Labs 
the CP210 and then X, obviously, depending on whichever one it is, uh, the uh, USB to UART bridge, okay, adapter. So that's a driver you need, and when you load this, it should automatically load. But if not, there'll be links to that. So now that we've got that done, we want to update our transmitter. Now, this transmitter already has the update, so I'm basically going to downgrade it just so I can show you how to update it, okay? So let me go ahead and turn it on. All right, now you can see here that the screen is completely different here than what it would normally look like, okay? Um, and so what we want to do is we're just going to go ahead and hold the OK button, and then we're going to get to our system setup, and we're going to click OK. And then we're just going to go down until it says firmware update, and I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to tell you, are you sure you want to do this? You're going to lose your functions. And then move your uh, arrow one time to yes, click OK. Now it's going to go into the mode to be updated, okay? And so at this point, what I'm going to do, on the website here, it tells you to click here to download the uh, FlySky firmware. So I'm going to down, and I've already downloaded it. But if I click it here, it's going, to, uh, it's going to put this in my downloads folder. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. And let me see if I can get this. Uh, I got another mouse and PC over here to my left that I need to wake up. But for some reason, it's going to sleep mode. I'll get it up in a minute. Okay, oops. I, uh, let me go back to do this. Okay, let's go. Okay, okay, down. Okay, all right. So when you go to your downloads folder, now I've already done these before, but we're going to look at it again. So here's the, here's the folder I downloaded, which is the FSI6, okay? Uh, no, sorry, the FSI6 firmware right here, 2.0.17. Uh, uh, now, this is from FlySky. And when you extract it, it's going to give you this right here, the exe file. So now all you do is double click on that. It opens your, uh, it'll open its own screen here for updating. Make sure to select your port. So in this case, actually, let me just try to make this bigger here. Hold on. Sorry, let's see if I can do it this way. Uh... Yeah, let's try that. You all don't need to see my face. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and select COM5 because it said it was COM5, so there we go. And then I'm going to click Program. Oops, I'm sorry. I meant to click Open Port first. And I'm going to see my flash sky here, Populate. And then I'm going to click Program. And it's going to upload now and watch. Now you're going to see this restart. Okay, so the, the transmitter will restart as soon as that's done. Okay, there it is. Okay, so now... You can see I'm back to my original screen. This looks pretty familiar to you guys, okay? And then if you go and hold OK again, and you click OK in the system, and you go, whoops, uh, sorry, let me get back here. And you click OK, and you go down, and you go to firmware version, you're gonna see that I have version 2.0, which was made in February 2018, okay? So great, there you are now, and that's gonna get you, that's your update um, to get you back to the newest FlySky right release okay so and that's how you do that so now we're out of the way on that one so let's go back now and um let's see what we got so with this done uh we're gonna click cancel get out of all this okay and let me show you one last thing here uh oops let me hold on click okay go down you can go to you see you have trainer student and stick mode and so forth okay now one of the things i want you to notice is if you hold okay down right and you go to your setup for your function setup you click okay and you go to your auxiliary channels you only have these two here, five and six. And one of the things that holds you back from being able to do a lot of the functions with this was that you need more auxiliary channel. I mean, you've got all these switches here and you also have the ability to get RSSI. And that's what these guys did. These guys are brilliant. They came up with a way through the software to make this all happen. And that's, that's what we're gonna do right now. So here's what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to doing this screen like this. Okay, there we go. All right, so here's what we do now. So you've got the computer screen up here. Now I'm gonna close this down. I'm going to get out of all my stuff here, right? So there's my radio. And what I want to do now is, now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead. There's my data cable. I'm telling you guys now to click this link here because this is the download that I used. But if you want to go to the original page and the creator's page, you can click that as well and find it from there. So um, uh, let me see. This is the creator's page here. And what I'm telling you that I did, let me see if I can show you this way. Let me close this out. Is This is the link to his page. Okay. And here's the updates here. All right. And then what I did is I went over and I've already downloaded 1.7.5 for you, which is right here. So just you can click that one if you want to click it. And then it's going to download here for you, which I've already done prior. And you can see the options here. Okay. So once you download, once you click that, I'm going to delete this one because I have multiples of them now. Um, so once you delete this one, 
Okay, so what you want to do now is you want to go ahead, here's the file, and I'm just going to delete mine that's already extracted. Okay, so let me do that. Uh, and you will need this file too, but that's for later on. Um, okay, so this is the 1.7.5 that I would have just downloaded. I'm going to extract that as well. Okay. All right, so now 1.7.5 is right here. And here's the file here, okay? Now there's a couple ways you can run this, but for what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna run this using the standard um, uh, Windows, the, the updater uh, win.exe. So I'm gonna double click it real quick, okay? And I'm gonna click yes. Okay, now it's giving me the option uh, to run the uh, FlySky i6 with the uh, SWE adapter. Now that, that is to also go in line with the um, switching uh, 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 mod that you can do on here. Now I, I did a lot of reading on that and, it, and I, heard, I read that there's a lot of people having problems with that one, especially if you don't have the mod for that. So I'm going to tell you right now, unless you've, uh, unless you've made the mods to do that, stay out of it and just go to the one that is the FSI6 updater, not the SWE. Okay. So let's do the FSI6 updater. So for that, we're going to press number one. So put a one right there and hit enter okay and now you're going to see it and it's going to give you an error here and it's going to tell you it timed out right so if you see the timeout error chances are you forgot to put your radio in update mode okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead remember now we're going to hold okay then go to system setup and we're going to go down until we get to firmware update then we're going to click okay press okay change it the arrow to yes and press okay now it's waiting now what, watch what happens. If I hit enter, one and enter, you're gonna see it now populate, okay? And if you want, you could see the screen. Whoops, I moved it too far. Uh, you're gonna see it here, and there it is. That's it, sorry, it went quickly. Now what you're gonna notice, it's gonna automatically restart, right? And if you look at the screen here now, you're gonna see that we now have a different looking home screen here, okay? And so on our home screen now, we have a kind of a blank page here, but watch this. When I hit okay, and I go to system setup, watch this now. I'm gonna go down, and all of a sudden I got this new to, uh, 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 option before, st or, uh, before stick mode, but after student mode, and it's called extras, and there's a whole bunch of extras here, including our timer, right? So we have a timer, and if you're familiar at all with this i6, you know that about 60 seconds after you start it, it starts beeping if you don't touch it. Well, that timer tells it 10 minutes. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's really cool. There's a lot of options here, but what we're focused on is the RSSI, okay? So we've now upgraded, we've now flashed this, right? I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel, get out of this. And now what we wanna do is I'm gonna show you the other part. Look at this. If I go down to system function setup and I click okay, watch, whoops, I'm oh, sorry about that. Watch when I go to function setup, and then I'm gonna go to auxiliary channels. Now check this out. Look how many channels I have now, okay? And that's not all. Let me just keep going. Oops, sorry, I keep forgetting that you have to press OK to switch. Now check this out. I got channels to 14, and there's a reason it says error, and this is why I'm going to show you next, okay? But for this particular uh, setup with the A8S, um, this is how we're going to do it. So just ignore that for the time being, but let's go back. Oops, I, keep, I hate doing that. Okay, so you've got your auxiliary channels. Now I actually have three of these switches already programmed, whereas before it was kind of limited. Now I can have as many as I need, at least up to this many, right? Um, okay, so as far as what we've done here, uh, that's it, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna disconnect our update cable because we're not gonna be using it anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the update cable itself from the computer. Okay, let me kind of zoom out now. All right, now comes the trickier part. This is the part that takes a little bit more time um, and it, it, it can be a little tricky. You need to know what you're doing when you're soldering, all right? All right, so there's that. Now, for the next part of this, and if I show you the page here on the computer, for the next part, you're gonna need to get an ST-Link USB adapter, which is right here. And I'm gonna give you a link to these because we're actually gonna have these in stock in the next couple days, but you can go on Amazon. If we don't have them yet, you can go on Amazon, but we should have them pretty quickly. Um, okay, and then you're gonna need some cables, and those will usually come with it. Um, and you're gonna need your receiver. Okay, and you need to remove the uh, you need to remove uh, the shielding around it. So let me show you the one I worked on because this is basically what it's going to look like if you're using the i8s. Okay, now the i8s is one of the few native or one of the few uh, FlySky receivers 
if I'm not mistaken, that does not have native RSSI on it, right? You just can't pull it out and it doesn't run through the S bus. You have to actually load the firmware to make that happen. That's what we're gonna do now, okay? Now, I believe you have the i6. Oh, I think the C, B and C both have it. The IA6, uh, C and B both have it to run out of the um, S bus or I bus uh, port. But on the, a, on the A8S, it does not. And that's why we're going to load this software next. Okay. So there, you're going to see here right off the bat, and I'll show you a couple different versions of this. So let me cut this one open. Now, this one was, I believe, dead on arrival. So it does not have... It just blinks. It won't, the bind button, it won't even react to it. Now, I'm going to try to do a firmware update on this one later to see if that's all it is. But um, let me show you what we're looking at, though, okay? So, oh, my goodness, hold on. All right. Now, give me one second. Let's get this or, 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 or lined up properly. But I need to zoom in on this for you. So bear with me a second. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get, I got to get your software lined up too. But like, like I said, right now we're just going to be doing this part. So let me see if I can get that done. And let's see what I got here. So my stuff is just delayed here. And it should be ready in just a second. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna be using the pads on both sides, okay? So as you can see here, we've got everything set up here to get ready to go. And what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and get our flux pen, and we're gonna get ready to solder, okay? So go ahead and get your flux, and go ahead and apply it to the pins on this side, right here and go ahead and apply it again to this side. Now on this side where there's two pins, this is gonna be our um, 3.3 uh, volt and it's gonna be our ground, okay? So let's go ahead and get that tinned up real quick. So just get yourself a couple of drops of solder right there and there. And I've already done this one as you can see, but I'm doing this one so that you guys can see uh, what you need to do here. now. On this side, we're only gonna be doing our data and our clock. So that's gonna be uh, pad number two here and pad number three. And don't worry about bridging them. They're pretty far apart. I may not look at here, but they are, but then you can just scrape it across. If you feel like you bridge it, just run your soldering iron across like that. It'll be good to go. Okay, so we've got these two uh, pads. Um, I'm trying to get it to zoom just a little bit better, but you're basically gonna use those two pads, right? So pad two and pad three, if you're counting from left to right. And then on this one, you're gonna use both of them, okay? Now I'm gonna go grab a wire real quick. <clears throat> okay, all right. So one of the things that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that um, we have our clock and our data. So uh, the, second, the second tab here is gonna be our clock, and the third tab is gonna be our data, okay? So when you look at this RS, uh, our, sorry, our ST link, you're going to see an option here. It's very hard to read it with this light, but if you could, it tells you here you've got um, on the bottom. Now we're talking about the bottom row here, okay? You've got your 3.3 volt, which is going to be your second pin, right? So if you look at the bottom here, you've got one, two, three, four, five pins, okay? Now you've got two rows, top and bottom, so we're talking about the bottom one. So you've got five pins, okay? And so in this, you've got a 3.3. A five volt is the first one, a 3.3 is the second one, and then you've got your clock, and then you've got a ground, and then you've got your um, data, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach to the clock and the data, and we're gonna attach to the ground and the 3.3. So what I did, and I don't know how you guys wanna do it, but what I did is I took, um, the easiest thing was for me to find my cables that had a male on one side and a female on the other, okay? So let me grab a couple here and see if I can show you what I did here. It would make a little bit more sense, I guess. <clears throat> and I know I've got them, so bear with me a second. Uh, okay, so let's just do it like this. So let's just say that for color coding purposes, we're gonna use red and brown to be our 3.3 in our ground. So we're gonna set those right there. 
and then we're going to have our data. Uh, let's just do orange and yellow, okay, for data and clock, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do that real quick and show you what that's going to look like. So let me get this one out of the way. So you got to be very careful. I know the pads are really small, but you're going to have to tin up and do the stuff like you would normally do. So let me get the, here is the solder paste. Let me zoom out here real quick. Okay. Getting to open this thing is be a little tricky, I guess. Okay, there's our solder paste. So let's just go ahead and get started here. I'm just going to take the ends of these, all of these actually, and I'm just going to I'm just going to dip these in uh, the solder paste, uh, the flux paste. Sorry. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and just start tinning them up. All right. So just like the receiver, we want to tin these up. So do one here. Do another one here. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and do the yellow one. And then we'll go ahead and do the orange one. Okay. So there's that. Now, while that's cooling down a second, I need to go back here. <clears throat> and let me get you guys, I want to get you guys a link that you're going to need. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and now solder. Our, uh, you may need some tweezers for this. I'm going to use tweezers. So we want to solder our um, positive. So remember, our positive is going to be on the left side. If you're holding the board, if you're looking at the board with the antenna to your left and the plug to your right, then the you're going to use the um, you're going to use the first set here closest to the back as your uh, that's you're going to be your primary your three volt. Okay, and you got to just be a little bit careful. It's a little it's a small piece and I'm not using magnifier although I should be but bear with me here I'm just going to try to do it so I don't block the shot okay that should be good enough hopefully that'll hold to give us our power okay now the thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure your uh, values here match so make sure you're running uh, your address is the same as here and make sure the size is the same as here okay and then what you want to do is you want to go and you want to go to target <clears throat> and then you want to say connect and it should populate if it populates like this you're in good shape okay then what you're going to do is you're going to go to say file and you're going to save as what you're doing basically now is you're backing up okay so click save file as and just find yourself now i've already done it here but just find yourself a spot and just type um let's see uh we'll do i a eight s dash backup okay and just click save okay it's going to read it and it's done all right now you're going to notice at this point that everything's pretty much dimmed out here if you notice now the lights off everything's off right and this light has turned to blue so let's go ahead now and go back there we go let's leave this here and close this out let's now unplug it okay and you'll notice it's now gone you could hear it sound now let's plug it back in okay our lights are back on and we're ready to finish our update. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to go back and say target connect, right? And then we want to go to a file or sorry, target program and verify. And now we want to find our file. Now I've got mine cause I already ran this once, but there it is right there. Okay. So we want to make sure you go to browse and you find where you put this AAS RSSI channel 14. Okay. And you're going to click it, click open. Okay and you're going to click start. Here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. All right. And it is now a success. Okay. And you'll see it just give it a little bit. And now we are ready to go. So we know that everything is done. Okay. And you can see your log here of what's been done. And everything is set up here. And at that point, we can go ahead now and say file and we can click exit. Okay, no more lights are blinking. 
everything's finished. Well, as soon as the lights are done, especially this blue one, this little blue one here on the end is going to be blinking the whole time. So go ahead and just click exit. And now you've just updated your A8S, okay? So now we can go ahead and disconnect it. And we could remove it. Now I'm curious to see if this uh, would have fixed the soldering problem as well. So we're going to, uh, not the soldering problem, sorry, the uh, binding problem. Because this, this particular receiver did not work. But we're going to find out real quick, okay? And if not, that's fine. I was just curious and I figured I'd find out during our video. All right. So here is the quad in question. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and plug in our quad so we can get into beta flight. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open beta flight. Uh, we're going to see. I did want to test this real quick, so let me see if I can get this to uh, respond properly. All right. And if not, oh well, it was worth a shot. You just, I guess they just get some of their DOA, and I was hoping that this could be solved. All right, so I'm going to hold the bind button down and see if I can get a rapid blinking red light now, now that I've done the firmware update. Oh my gosh, it worked. Look at that. So we've, we've actually fixed these. So if you guys get some that are dead on arrival like mine was, do the firmware update. Look at that. And that worked out well too, so that's great. All right, so now that we've got it blinking quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and turn on our receiver, okay? And let me zoom out here. All right, so now that we've got it blinking quick, we're gonna turn on our receiver, and we're gonna go to hold down the OK, click OK, and let me see where am I at here? Okay, so everything looks good there. So now I'm just going to uh, turn it off. Sorry, I just I always like to check and make sure my screen comes up properly. Hold the bind button down here in the bottom left, turn it back on. And there we go. Our blinking is now not rapid anymore. And we're binding and we're good. So now we can go ahead and turn it off. Okay. And get us our stuff back on. And now you can see our light is a solid red. Okay. So now let's look at beta flight real quick. So in beta flight, we're going to connect, all right? And what we want to do is we want to, you see how you have an RSSI now? See, that didn't used to exist before, okay? So this is the coolest part. So here's what you have to do. Now that you've got everything set up on your radio, you need to hold down the OK button, okay? And you need to go to system setup. You need to go to function setup. You need to click OK. You need to go to your auxiliary channels now. And with all these here, you need to, whoops, you need to find auxiliary 14 or channel 14 and you need to go ahead and, and, and change it. You have all these options now, right? Change it to the one that says error. That's actually your RSSI. That's actually it telling it to find the RSSI signal running on the uh, S bus or I bus channel on, on 14. Okay. So make sure it says error and then hold down your cancel button. That saves it, right? Okay. Now on beta flight, here's what you need to do. In beta flight, you need to tell it under under receiver, and you can see we've got full receiver function. You need to tell it that you want RSSI to be on auxiliary channel 10. Okay, so make sure you come over to beta flight. And let me just let me just see if I can make this picture bigger. There, you need to come over here, and you need to tell it that you want uh, auxiliary 10 right here. Okay, and then once you do that. You go ahead and click Save, and then you can go to your CLI, all right? And you're gonna type uh, set RSSI, all right? And let's just go down to Channel and hit Enter. And you're gonna see here that yours may be at zero. It all depends. But because of the way it's done, you have four channels already set. One, two, three, and four are your throttle and your uh, rudder and all that, right? Your pitch and everything, right? And your yaw. So, your channels that we're referring to, channel 10, is at channel one on this, on the on this portion is actually starting on channel five. Okay? So you're always gonna add four channels to it. And I know you've seen this before. So anyways, if your radio says channel uh, channel 14 and your uh, output here says channel 14, those are the same. But in beta flight, 
it's actually going to be channel 10. So what you're going to do is you're going to say set RSSI, whoops, channel equals 14, which is what I already did, right? And you hit OK, then you hit save, type save, okay? So, but what you're going to see uh, when it reconnects, let me show you here, under your receiver, okay, it's, to it, it's channel 10. But if you were to count, right, from this being one, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14. That's where the 14 comes from, okay? So on here, it considers it auxiliary channel 10. That's why there's a 10 here. But in the CLI, it's actually channel 14 because that's what's on the radio. So the, once you get this done, you literally now have RSI signal coming through thanks to these modifications from these guys that are brilliant who made the software for both the A8S update and they also did it for the transmitter, okay? Um, and I've worked on both of them and obviously I'm extremely excited now because it even fix, fixed the one that, was, that wouldn't even bind, okay? Um, and at that point, you can now put the RSSI on your OSD by going into your OSD menu and giving your RSSI signal here. It will automatically pull it because it's already feeding it from channel 14. And um, let me see if I grab the antenna, we'll get a better signal. And then if I let go and I move it away, we're going to see it drop. And I had this taken out earlier and you could tell it went to like 80 or 70, but I can't do it in this video. So that's how you do it, guys. And I hope that really helps. I don't know. Uh, I just know that I, I, I did a lot of looking today and a lot of uh, spending time on this. And so I'm really happy with the end result. Um, and it did work really well. The ports on here were set just like this, okay? Uh, and everything was great. So that's it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna help you guys or not, but all the links and everything will be on there. And by the time you see this video, there'll be a link to the tutorial page on the computer, uh, which has all this. And I will give a shout out to everybody that worked on this deal that made this even possible. I was just a guy that was researching it and I figured I'd put it together, but props to all you guys that make this stuff possible. All right, you make this, uh, you make this hobby more affordable and definitely give us some workarounds that otherwise the manufacturers weren't gonna give us. So anyways, until then guys, if you have any questions, hit me up at Tark at CycloneFPV.com. Uh, also, please follow us, uh, is that right, follow us? Yeah, on Facebook, and then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it is currently, let me see, September, or not September, December uh, 30th. I am leaving tomorrow, or today. I got my boys back, and we are headed to Colorado to go skiing for three days or four days. So I am not doing any drones uh, come Monday morning. Uh, we fly out and I'll be back on Friday. So between Monday to Friday, I'll be you know, checking emails, but I won't be shipping anything, nothing. I'm putting everything down for four days and gonna go spend time with my kids and my wife, Samantha. Okay, so you guys have a great new year. I hope it goes safe and well for you. I'm gonna go have some great family time, but I wanted to get this out to you guys before I left. Uh, otherwise, God bless, have fun. Please spend time with your family, guys. It's critical and important. You never know when that time runs out. Okay, till then, fly safe. See you soon, bye.